Hi everyone, it's Robin and welcome to Happy at Home. Today I would like to share with you and give you a little tour of my favorite place to hang out in my home and that is my craft area. I don't have a room all itself but I've carved out a little corner of our family room that is now designated as mom's craft area. There's a little space there for the kids too of course but for most part it's my area in which I get to build things, sew things, create things, and I absolutely love it. So when I started to put together this area for myself, I started looking at garage sales and thrift stores and stuff like that, and that's where I found most of the furniture. I did have a desk that was handed down to me from my in-laws that we moved into this space also, and then everything else I've either created myself by building shelves, and you know that sort of thing so I'm really enjoying the space that I have and I thought I would share it all with you give you a quick little tour and then kind of show you all the goodies that I've hidden away in all the different drawers and stuff like that so that is what we're going to do today um, so I'm going to keep this tour real casual and just do it vlog style because that's the easiest way to do it and I think the most effective for this sort of space so enough chit chatting by me, let's go ahead and take a tour of my craft area. Okay, so this is the main space that I have carved out for myself. It sits by the back door and next to the back door I've got this um, coat rack and bench underneath it. So that kind of just blends into my craft space. So let's see, I don't know even where to start. Um, let's start with the furniture. So everything in this room has pretty much been either handed down to me or I found at the thrift store or something like that. So the first piece is this credenza right here. I got this credenza and then on the other side of it is this huge desk and it's basically the same as this black desk here. It's black on the bottom like this. And I got both of them at a church sale for $10 and I was like what? So of course I picked it up because this has got a ton of storage and I just bumped the two together to give myself a nice big work surface. So I'm loving that. And then if you go over here, this big desk we put here for my daughters to sit and craft when they want to do something with me. This is a hand-me-down from my um, in-laws used to have this in their house. They gave it to me. I can't remember how long we've had it. Um, I did paint it, the bottom part, and then I left the top the way it was originally. And then this chair here I found at the thrift store and I thought it was so cool. The color is not that great, but it's an old like, um, what do you call it? It's an old science lab chair. And I thought it was just the coolest thing. So eventually, someday, I will repost her that. And I don't think I've paid more than like $10 for it. And I thought it was really cool. And this thing is super comfortable. And then here I'll give you a view of here's what the desk looks like on this side. So I've got three more, two drawers on that side. And three more on this side. And this thing is ginormous. And it is heavy heavy <laughs> so it is not going anywhere but I get a lot of storage a lot of workspace and I love it and on top of the desk I always put I always have my self-healing quilt mat it just kind of protects the surface it's getting a little rough it is double-sided so I do flip it over sometimes but yeah it just kind of protects the surface so over here off to the side along the wall I have filled a toolbox and an old crate with things that I like to keep on hand. So I filled the toolbox with mason jars like this that I find at the thrift store. Um, I always like to find the wide mouth ones because they hold it just is easier. So I have one filled with scissors and I collect vintage scissors. So I just have three pair right now that I have found. I love them so much. I just use the sharpener and keep them sharp. And then I have one filled with um, paint brushes. These are mama only paint brushes. Kids are not allowed to use them. And then tucked into here, I have just little pieces of, um, what do you call it? 
sandpaper for when I need to sand something. And then this one has pencils, pens, that sort of thing, markers. This one has decorative scissors and a hole punch. This one back here has my um, wire cutters, needle nose pliers, and then like a scraping, painting scraping tool. This little jar back here holds the kids' paint brushes. And then I have some larger paint brushes in another one. And this one usually holds glue sticks, but we are completely out of glue sticks. It's a catastrophe. Also has my little paint can openers and then some popsicle sticks for like mixing things or whatever I need them for. So that's what I do use my toolbox for. And then I have a Pepsi crate. I don't even know where I got this from. I think maybe my mom and dad gave it to me. I've had it so long. But it has the four compartments in it. In one compartment I have like little scraps of fabric that I plan to use. Another one has little bottles of yarn that the kids can use whenever they're doing any projects. This one, I have another mason jar filled with colored pencils. Another mason jar with, I don't know, these are like little, I don't know, I must have been working on a project or something a while ago. So those have been sitting there for a while. I also tuck in my measuring tape. And then this is my drill bits that I keep. This right here is my quote journal that I sometimes sit and color or put another quote in when I find a quote I like. And then I have two more jars back here. One has Phillip head screwdrivers and the other has the flathead screwdrivers. So I like that. And then I just have like a bingo card tucked in here for fun. And this is a little picture of a donkey because I like donkeys. So yeah, so that is how I keep my supplies close at hand. And then I like it because of course it's in like vintage containers, so that makes me very happy. And then let's go up to the window here. The window itself has just, oh, it's not going to be very good lighting. Let's see. All right. Up here at the window, I just have some mini blinds with no curtain. I don't know what to do with it. But I found these horse show ribbons and I'm like, what am I going to do with them? So I ended up putting one here on the corner. I just hung it on this little header board with the hook that's on the back and I think it looks really cute and then I have one over on the other side too I don't know if you can see that or not but yeah so I put the other one on the other side and I think it's kind of cutesy and fun way to use something vintage all right so moving on oh and then on my table of course I always like to add a little something cutesy just so it looks pretty uh, most of the time this tray gets moved out of the way. This is just a wood-like tray I put, oh, I made a while back. It just has little feet on it. It's distressed, and I love it. So I have my favorite candle at the moment, which is Georgia Peach. I think it's from Bath & Body Works. And then I have this little, sweet little um, cow pepper shaker, salt and pepper shaker, but I only have one of them. I found it at a garage sale for like 10 cents, and I just think he's the cutest little thing. And then of course I have got a, t um, a galvanized pot filled with a little bouquet of flowers. These are from Michael's, and you can buy them already made up. I just kind of, you know, like that. And I just bent the, bent the stalks over and plopped it in the thing, and I think it's nice and cute. So that is that little section and then on the kids desk I found this pencil holder thing at the thrift store I think it was like four dollars so we've got all the markers in this one and then over on the other side this is a bin that we got at Target I think a couple years ago they always have some sort of utensil bin every year so this is they've got more supplies colored pencils. Normally there's a glue gun that goes in there. That one's empty which is probably is supposed to have glue but my one daughter is totally obsessed with making slime right now so there's a glue shortage in our house right now. <laughs> so that's where the glue goes. And then she's just got some other supplies in here. Scissors. Oh 
her hand cream because she can never go anywhere without hand cream. So yeah, and color crayons, stuff like that. So that's a nice little tote for her. And then I'm not going to go through her drawers, but basically it's all kids, kid um, crafting stuff on this side and on this side down here. Alright, so then moving over here on this side of the desk I have a ironing board that I made oh, a while ago. It's just a board that I covered with a grain sack and it's got some batting on it and I can pick this up and move it onto my table and I can do some spot ironing or whatever I want to do if I'm just doing a little bit of ironing for a craft project that I have. So I love this because it's both useful and decorative at the same time. So that always sits there at the end of that desk. And then that brings us back to this desk right here. This is where majority of my craft supplies and sewing supplies are held within this side of the desk and the other. Um, underneath, I store my miter box and my saw and my, what do you call this thing? My drop cloth and then there is a paint kit down there for the kids. Alright, so over on this side I have my desk chair and this is something that I found at the thrift store. Also, I love these old office chairs so much. Um, I know the colors don't match anything else, but I don't really care. One of these days I will resurf or recover it. But for now, it's in, like, in perfect condition, and I think I paid like $6 for it oh, a couple years ago. And then, over here, I have a people paper filing system. I just have scrap paper, some notebooks, and stuff like that where I can keep track of stuff. Or if I need some paper, well, that's where I grab from. And then down here on the floor, I have a super sophisticated way of storing my sewing machine. Nice, right? But most of the time I pick up the sewing machine and I put it on the desk right here so it's nice and handy. So above my desk I have this huge wicker chandelier I guess you'd call it. I don't really know. I found it at Ikea and it was on sale for five dollars and then I just have to find buy the little light kit that goes with it and I think that was like I don't know it was under ten dollars. So I thought it was really cool and I love the task. I love it for task lighting when I'm working at my desk. It's just perfect. So I really like that. And then over here on the wall, I have a set of shelves that I put decorative items on. These shelves I made, I had them hanging in my living room for a really long time. And they're just simple little shelves. And I have them filled up with stuff. So majority of my storage is in this area here and then on the other side of the desk and the drawers over there for all of my craft, su craft supplies. So I think I'm just going to go through each drawer individually and we'll see what's in each. So this first drawer I have beading supplies here, more beads, bead tools, and then in the back I have paints. Um, these are all my craft paints. And these little tubs are like, what do you call them? Baby wipe tubs? These things work amazing. I use them all over the house. That is a very good thing to use for helping me organize my paints. And, oh look, I have some floral tape. I was looking for that the other day. Darn it. Alright, well anyways. So that's what's in my first drawer. And then the second drawer, I really don't use this drawer very often, but I have one of these little paint trays. And then these are my acrylic paints down here. Mostly my kids use those. I don't use them very often. And then I have some old scrapbooking stuff, which I really don't use anymore, but stuff I want to keep, like a, a hole punch, stuff like that. Exacto knife kit, and then I've got this big thing of wood letters, which I use occasionally. Those are nice to have. What is this? Oh, oil pastels. I thought I was gonna teach myself how to use these, and I've had them for about a year now. They're still in the case. Extra extension cord in case I need it, and a water bottle for when I'm like 
ironing or whatever. So that is what's in that drawer. And don't you just love these drawers? How they're yellow inside? Oh, I just love, I love this desk so much. All right, so I'm gonna skip these two for right now and go over to this drawer over here. This is just my basic um, craft supply miscellaneous drawer. Um, I've got some twine in here. And some little burlap bags. I think I got those at Michael's. More twine in there. Got some chalkboard paint. Some ceiling hooks. Some command strips. And then back in here I have a few. I need to bring this upstairs. Planner supplies. And then this little bin in here just holds like miscellaneous little doodads and craft stuff. So I have that in there. Oh, and like pegs and stuff. Oh, what is this down here? Oh, baby pom poms. And then over here, tucked in, I have stencils. And then I got three other, two other stencil packs for when I want to use those. All right. Oh, and then I've got some little bit of florist wire left. And a little florist block, which I have not used yet. So that's that drawer. And then this drawer down here. Oh my goodness, this drawer is a mess. Alright, so in this one I have an extra pillow cover from Ikea. Fabric. <laughs> and then this pile is like vintage sheets that I want to use sometime. It's just little scraps. So I keep those in there. Embroidery. What do you call it? Embroidery hoops. And then look at these. Aren't these fun? Um, horse ribbons. I have one here and then another one. So I need to find a place for these, which I have not found a place for yet. This is, oh my goodness, what is this? Oh, this is the start of a quilt that I started a while back, which I haven't finished. I forgot all about that. Oh, here's some binding that I made from vintage fabric. Oh, what is this? This is to be in the kids stuff. This is one of those little melty bead things. Zoe loves playing with, loves doing these. So I'm gonna leave that out to put that away. And then I have the tinsel um, pipe cleaners. I love this stuff at Christmas time. I use it all the time for crafts. So I've got a couple packages of that. More fabric, more fabric, and then this box, this little toolbox right here, has my stamps and stuff like that. I got a couple different alphabet stamps. These are, I have a whole bunch more, but these are the ones that I use most regularly. So those stay in this cute little toolbox in the back over there. So yeah, that is what's in that drawer. Uh, these two cabinets is where I keep most of my fabric. And as you can see, it is a plumb full of fabric. Up on top, I've got little scraps of fabric that I've used in the past, some batting, and then just a little more scraps. I've got some um, what do you call this? Grain sacks up in here and like more natural kind of fabrics. And then over here I have some drop cloth fabric that I have left over. And then this collection of red and white fabric which I bought a while back. I was going to make myself some clothes but I never got around to it. So eventually I'll use this fabric for something else because I really like that fabric. And then down below I've got a little bit of what is this stuff called? Um, felt. Um, I did a project at Christmas time with red and white felt and that's what I have left. All right, so then, so looking at the rest of all this in here is my, basically this whole section is filled up with my vintage sheet collection. Every time I go to the thrift store, I'm always looking for vintage sheets and this is where I store them. I wash them and dry them and then I put them in here and when I want to make something this is where I put it. So I have this whole stack in yellows right here 
And then behind the yellow stack, I've got another stack back in there with multiple colors. And then up on top, I've just found white sheets that I use for backings. So there's that. And then over here, I have a stack of blue sheets and in the back more fabric and then for backing of the quilts and then more vintage sheets so yeah i have quite the collection of vintage sheets right now <laughs> so that right there is basically my fabric collection at the moment um actually feels like i don't have very much in this section right here because i used to be so full that I couldn't shut the door barely at all. So I need to stock up again because I feel like my I feel like my um supplies are dwindling. So there you go. There is my vintage sheet collection and fabric collection from what I have at the moment. We'll start over here at the bottom drawer. This bottom drawer has most of my yarn i used to crochet a lot or i was attempting to try to crochet and i really enjoyed it but i haven't been able i haven't done it this i normally do crochet in the winter time because i sit and crochet and watch football and it is the most enjoyable time ever so yeah i didn't get to it this past year at all but so i have all my yarns and then this little tray here holds my what do you call it crochet needles or whatever and then these boards here I just keep in here because a lot of times at my desk I will paint or do some sort of project I want to prop up and these are the boards that I use to prop up on so that is basically the bottom drawer the middle drawer <laughs> is kind of crazy all right so I keep my glue gun in here and this is um a school box pencil box that I had when I was like in elementary school my mom kept it and then she gave it to me a couple years ago so now I keep a few little things in it I have like glue dots my exacto knife some little acrylic blocks for stamps a little stamp set what else do I have in here I'm trying not to cut myself and then I just have miscellaneous like markers and stuff that I don't want out so that the kids won't see them and use them and ruin them. Those are my good markers. So I keep all that in here out of the way of the kids and their prying eyes. And then a lot of times I will sit down here and do my nails. So my nail polish collection is in another tub that is meant for, it's another wipes tub. I just ripped off the lid and now it holds all my nail polishes. So that is there. And then in the back here, I have some vintage books. Um, two books here. One's a regular, like, you know, a regular book with words on it. The other is a dictionary. And then down here, I have a sheet music and a sheet music book. And I just use, and then down at the very on the very bottom is some cardstock. And these are the books that I use when I want to make anything, um, like a paper wreath or anything like that these are the books that i work from until these are gone and then i'll replace them with something else so that is what i use when i want some sort of you know decorative paper from a book basically so that is the second drawer and then the top drawer is my embroidery drawer um starting in the back i've got an embroidery case oh and here's another book that i rip pages out of when i want to do stuff and then down underneath i have some an art pad like a if you can see that red strip right there that is just like a notebook or a drawing pad so i use that when i'm like watercoloring painting or anything like that and then this little section is my little to-go bags of embroidery that i'm currently working on um, I've got this one going on, and then I have this one going on, which is almost done, which I do a lot of embroidery in the summertime because I find that it's very easy to take with me when I'm like going to kid activities, like sports and stuff, or if I'm going to the beach, 
gives me something to do while the kids are splashing around in the water. So yeah. So I need to get a couple more to-go bags ready to go. This is just fabric that I use to sew on. And then um, I made a quilt not too long ago with the red and white stripe and the blue and white stripe. So this is just the leftover fabric that I had. Oh, and here's one of my little embroideries that I did. And then this bag is filled up with embroidery projects that I have finished, but I have yet to do anything with. So I want to make a pillow out of this one. This was supposed to go on the wall, but I really don't like the way it turned out. So that will probably never get used. And then I just have some miscellaneous <laughs> embroidery floss in here also. So that is what's in the middle section. Um, yeah. And then in this front section, I have a little bit of binding that I've made that's ready to go for next time. And then this and then another one looks like I got a couple different ones and then I have a collection of little bits of fabric that when I am done with a project I uh, and if I have extra fabric but it's not enough to make anything out of I will cut it into different size squares and I will put them in here so eventually I will have enough to make a quilt out of so that's my plan um, so I've got, I think this is a 4 inch block and then a 5 inch block and then over on this side, here's white in a, maybe an 8, 4, 5 inch and then I've got a couple different floral ones also down here on the bottom. So yeah, so that is my kind of my quilt in progress area. <laughs> Just because, you know, when I'm making these quilts out of vintage sheets, I don't want to waste any of the fabric. It feels horrible to throw any of it away. So, like, here's a little section at the that's from the very top of a, a sheet. You know, like that folded over part. So, I'll make, like, a quilt patch out of this or something like that. So, I just keep it. I need to find a better system for it. And then, like, or if I've got, like, a lot... I'll cut it into strips and I'll use it for a quilt binding, which is what that is right there. So yeah, I try to use as much of the vintage sheets as I can. So, alright, so that is all that's in that drawer. So let's move over to the other side. Uh, let's start at the bottom drawer. This drawer, oh man, this drawer is never organized but I try. In the very back I have clothes patterns and patterns of different things for my kiddos or like skirts and that kind of thing that I swear I'm going to make someday and then various ribbons, trims, cording, whatever, you know that kind of stuff and then this box I have scissor sharpeners and miscellaneous like Things for sewing buttons, elastic, you know, hook and eyes, that sort of thing. So that all goes into this back section here. And the front section, I have a basket that corrals all of my ribbons that I have at the moment. And then tucked into the side <laughs> is a big, huge bag of bling, like rhinestones. Yeah, I did a project with that not too long ago and so that's what I have left over and then tucked into the side here is like different sizes different thicknesses of elastic that I need when I make things and then I have a paper plate for when I want to do some painting more elastic down in here and that's basically it for that drawer so that is what I keep in this big drawer right here and then finally this is the sewing drawer. This is where I keep all of my sewing um, accessories. This first one, I have a caddy, which is just like this wooden box thing, which I really should get out because I want to use it, but I like the way it works for my scissors. So I have all my different 
different scissors, rotary cutters, pins, and then this is like my needles and stuff. Um, yeah, and then a few little bits and bobs in the middle. And then back in here, I have all of my threads. Another sharpener for scissors. And then way in the back in this bin is like tracing paper, different things for the, my sewing machine, like the oil for it, the little tools, that sort of stuff. Stuff I don't need very often. So that is all back in there. And yeah, that's basically it. That is my sewing drawer. Alright, so that is the last drawer and what I have in it. Alright, so that is my craft area. It is definitely a place that I enjoy spending time and it is always a wonderful day when I can get down there and work on some sort of project or another. So I hope this was an enjoyable video for you and maybe it has inspired you if you are looking to carve out a space for yourself in which to create in. And nothing needs to be extravagant or expensive in order to create a space in which you will love and that you can be creative in. So yeah, I guess that's it for today. Thanks so very much for taking this tour with me today and I will see you again very soon. Bye now.